Don't tell him where I am. He'll kill me. So, uh, I'd just like to... <laughs> oh, sure. He doesn't have a computer. Um, let's introduce the cast of Crime City. Miss Marcy Lukianchuk. Dan Smith. Melanie Dubois. Adam Martinetti. Mr. Ken Gibb. And our winner for this evening because... Sadly, Mr. Mike Judson is not able to, uh, to make it today, so we got a ringer, Mr. Brad Brackenridge. <laughs> What's that? We can't start the show without characters. <laughs> what? So that means, let's get you guys your scripts. Playing the narrator this evening will be... Marcy yes! 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 Here's your script. Thank you. Playing Victor Marshall, our lead detective, will be <laughs> Mr. Dan Smith. <laughs> Playing Brad Bramble, a ten-year-old Boy Scout. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> We're putting that one back in. <laughs> Will be Melanie Dubois. And uh, playing Lillian Steele, our tough as nails, better detective, <laughs> will be Mr. Brad Brown. Yeah. Yeah. So there are still two names in the hat and four characters to go, but we'll figure out who those people are going to be later in the show. Um, Dear actors, you are more than welcome to try and do the established voices, or you could just take it in a new direction. <laughs> if you always think that Victor should have been Jamaican, tonight's your night. <laughs> when they are not speaking, they're just going to take a step back against the wall, and uh, <laughs> I'm going to run sound effects and we'll see how this goes. Why don't I get the one with the so. giant <laughs> Narrator, whatever you're ready. Ladies and gentlemen, Crime City! Greetings, junior detectives! Shine your bag, put on your trench coat, and grab your magnifying glass! It's time to set your radio style to intrigue for another exciting episode of Crime City in Space! <laughs> Crime City. Am I waiting for a sound cue? No, we don't have that. <laughs> Imagine a lusty film noir esque soundtrack. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Crime City, home to the fiends, scoundrels, and ne'er-do-wells of the world. A cesspool of illegality, honest citizens fear to walk the streets after dark. But one man stands against crime in Crime City, honor bound to serve justice and protect the innocent. Our hero, Victor Marshall, private detective. Victor Marshall, at your service. <laughs> Exiled from a group of corrupt police force, Victor Marshall, with the help of his boy sidekick, Brad Bramble, adventure scout, first class. You're not my sidekick. Saving the world. Don't. With scouting! God damn it! <laughs> and his trusty colleague, Lillian Steele. Hey, hello! <laughs> Aim to clean up crime, crime in Crime City! What nefarious foes will our heroes face in their quest to uphold the law? Find out in tonight's breathtaking installment, Victor Marshall versus the Cosmic Cloud. <laughs> Act one. We join our heroes, Victor, Lily, and, and Brad, as they bemoan the lack of crime in Crime City. What's that, you ask, gentle listener? A dry spell in criminal activities? You heard right. Our trio of do-gooders did great. But now, in crime's absence, tedium and ennui begin to creep in. <laughs> what will our heroes do to combat the menace of malaise? Let's listen and find out. <laughs> well, what about tax evasion? It's not even tax season, kid. All the tax evaders from last year have been rounded up by now. We have to wait until April for a fresh crop. Um, bootleggers? <laughs> <laughs> Bootlegging hasn't been a problem since they repealed Prohibition, Brad, darling. And that was almost 20 years ago. Oh, I know. Fishing without a permit? <laughs> Kid, face facts. There's no more crime in Crime City. Oh, well, are they going to rename the town? Who knows? I 
I'm more concerned about making this month's rent. With no cases to work, how will we put food on the table? I know that as detectives we should be happy that there's no more crime, but I have to admit, I never thought we'd put an end to it entirely. I guess we still have the good old days to think back on. Remember when we arrested the owner of the tobacco store? He was going to plant dynamite charges around his building and turn the whole place into a crater to collect the insurance money. Sure, who could forget Smokey in the planned pit? <laughs> or oh, that TV show host like to start fires at two in the morning. Late night with Johnny Arson. <laughs> Remember when we stopped that group of fringe religious weirdos who tricked depressed people into worshipping seafood? Oh, yes. The so-called blue oyster cult. <laughs> That's what's come to in terms of crime. I'd say that about wraps it up a wrongdoing here in Crime City. Well, what are we supposed to do? We should go to another town. Find some crimes there. I'm afraid our detective licenses only permit us to work within city limits, Brad. Until someone commits a crime here in town, we're on hiatus. Oh, fooey. I'm so bored. I wish there was crime going on someplace where we didn't have to worry about jurisdiction. Oh, sure. Like where, kid? Out of space? <laughs> yes. And with that, we need to cast a space prince. <laughs> <laughs> Playing the role of space prince is Mr. Adam Martinetti. Hey! <laughs> Earth detectives! Earth detectives! Do you read me? What the? An otherworldly voice? It appears to be coming from the radio. Victor, jiggle the antenna. What? Jiggle it! You couldn't just say adjust it? Mr. Marshall, jiggle it before you lose the signal! Fine, I'm jiggling! <laughs> this is Prince Lucic Mokta calling Earth detectives. Do you read me? Uh... I don't want to talk to it. A tisk, Victor. You stick in the mud. Hello? Yes, we read you. This is Lillian Steele, Earth Detective. To whom am I speaking? Thank goodness I've reached you. This is Prince Lucic Muckduck from Planet Flank. A prince? Yes. Crown Prince of the Planet Flank and ruler to be. Thank you ever so much for answering my distress call. According to Flank law, you are now obligated to assist me. Wow! What luck! <laughs> Hold on a minute there, Space Prince. Here on Earth, we ain't got no such law. Here on this planet, we hear the details of the case before we decide to take it on. Ha <laughs> ha! You must be the Clangmar of your tribe. Clang what? The Clangmar! The Oat Rat. What's the Earth word for it? The, um, King? Am I pronouncing that correctly? The King? King, yup. That's me. I'm the Clangmar, all right. Clangmar Victor Marshall, at your services. Oh, please. If anyone's going to be Clangmar, it's going to be me. There is an easy way to settle this. Which one of you has the most mucus glands? Uh, um... It's a simple question. Whichever of you can emit the most mucus must be the Clangmar. Uh, it's a tie. We're co Clangmars. What's going on, Prince Lusik? It sounds like you're issuing, issuing a distress signal. I am. You Earth detectives serve justice and protect the innocent, do you not? Sure do. That's our motto. Then I am in dire need of your assistance. An evil force known as the Nukpung has seized control of our capital city. I have managed to escape and send this distress call, but it's only a matter of time before they find me. The Nukpung? What do they want? I am afraid there's no time to explain. If you'll accept this mission, you'll be richly rewarded. You must get to my planet immediately. But how are we supposed to do that? Even if we make it into space, how will we know if we found you, Prince Lussick? Oh, it's quite simple. I bear a striking resemblance to your Earth film star, Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> birthday, Mr. President. I will happily betroth myself to whichever of your tribe rescues me. You marry us? I will, and gladly. 
If you'd be willing to have a mate who looks like Marilyn Monroe, of course. My mom says I can't watch her movies until I'm older. <laughs> <laughs> Look, this sounds like an interesting proposition and all. I don't know if we'll be able to help you, hourglass figure or no. We're sort of earthbound here. I may not be able to guide you myself, but you'll have help. If you'd aid me in defeating the Nukpung and reclaiming the ruler of the rule of my planet, simply turn your radio receiver's dial to the following combination. AM 1400, FM 97.3, AM 1220, FM 101.5. <laughs> and my robot assistant will make himself known to you. What do you think, boys? Helping a prince in need and saving an entire kingdom? What are we waiting for? <laughs> Beats sitting around here. Oh, thank you. Thank you. This recording will now play from the beginning. Oh. Wait, what now? Earth detectives! Earth detectives! Do you read me? It was a recording this whole time? Thank goodness I've reached you. This is Prince Lucic Muckdock of the planet Plank. But we were having an interactive conversation with it. Ha! You must be the climbar of your tribe. All right, just key in the combination. Let's see. AM 1400, FM 97.3, AM 1220, FM 101.5. That should do it. <laughs> Say, what's that electronic whirling sound? Uh, look at the radio. It's... It's transforming! <laughs> Looks like a robot! And that means we need to cast a robot. Hey. <laughs> Ken Gibb, come on up here. <laughs> <laughs> robot. <clears throat> Beep boop. <clears throat> Greetings, humans. I am Radbot, the radio robot. <laughs> 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 I'm here to guide you on your journey to the planet Plank. Boop. <laughs> Whistle. Pleased to meet you, Radbot. I'm Lillian Steele. Beep. <laughs> Inaccurate statement. <sighs> you do not contain steel. You're a human made of carbon, man. Oxygen, hydrogen, calcium, phosphorus, and other trace elements. Boop. Er, uh, no. My name is Steel. It is an inaccurate name, although I may be mistaken. Free scanning. <laughs> Scan complete. Only your support garment contains steel. <laughs> My support garment. Not that it's any of your business, you dynamo-driven deviant, but I certainly don't require steel supports. I happen to be shaped this way. Naturally. Yoga. Yoga. Inaccurate statement, man. Disable that function, will you, you technological tattletale? <laughs> Ain't nothing to be ashamed of, Lil. We all need a little help. Radbot, scan Victor. Hey, now, there's really no need to. <laughs> For you! <laughs> scan complete. Findings disastrous, man. <laughs> hey! Radbot, elaborate. Come on, Lil, I'm sorry. Boop! Scan of subject Victor Marshall correlates to the official definition of vagrant in seven different planetary systems. <laughs> Beep wee! <laughs> wow, that's... Uh, that's... that's quite a blow. <laughs> what is wrong with you two? We get a robot and the only thing you can think to use it for is insult one another? <laughs> she started it. No, I didn't. That clinking, clattering, cacophonous creep started it. <laughs> Scanning a lady's support garments is wildly inappropriate on this planet. Radbot, add that to your data banks. 
<laughs> Noted Earth being. Human Lillian Steele's file updated to include shaped this way. Boop. Darn tootin'. Guys, focus! We have to save the space prince! But how are we supposed to get to a whole other planet? Radbot is programmed to guide your interstellar rocket ship to planet Plank without delay, man. Yeah, but we ain't got no rocket ship, Sparky. How are we supposed to get to outer space without a rocket ship? Well, I've got an uncle who works for the National Air and Space Administration. <laughs> the what? N-A-S-A. -A. I always thought he was just an airplane mechanic. Brad, that's fantastic. If your uncle can get us access to the launch pad, we can sneak on board a rocket, plug in Radbot, and be on our way to the stars. Sounds good to me. And me. I'll be able to really supplement what I learned when I was running my junior astrology merit badge. Beep. Boop. Wee. <laughs> <laughs> well, gang, looks like we're going. To outer space! Suit up, junior astronauts. Shine your oxygen tank, put on your zero atmosphere pressure suits, and grab your primary life support subsystem. It's time to set your radio's dial to deep space adventure <laughs> as our heroes slip the surly bonds of the Earth atmosphere and dance the sky on just a silvered wings. Will our heroes tread the high, untrespassed untrust sanctity of space, reach out their hands and touch the very face of adventure, or will this mission be a real challenger? Oh. <laughs> Too soon, Junior Astronauts? Hey of course not! It's the fabulous 1950s and a solid 30 years before the Space Shuttle Challenger's disastrous flight! Loophole! <laughs> What awaits our heroes on their quest to liberate the royal family of the planet Plank? Stay tuned and find out. We'll return after these messages. Yay. Ladies and gentlemen, today's episode of Crime City is brought to you by Cornelius J. Cookworth's newest recipe book Let's called Let's Get Cooking with Cornelius J. Cookworth. Filled to overflowing with over 50 new recipes ranging from country comfort to the height of class. <laughs> If you want a mouth-watering evening in the, cook in the kitchen, Cornelius J. Cookworth is your man. Crime City is also brought to you by Cornelius J. Hookworth's new adults-only nightclub on Route 4, called Let's Get Hooking with Cornelius J. Hookworth, filled to overflowing with over 50 new dancers, ranging from country comfort to the height of class. If you want a mouth-watering evening out on Route 4, Cornelius J. Hookworth is your man. And now, back to the show. Welcome back, Junior Detectives. We rejoin our heroes, Victor, Lillian, Brad, and their new companion, Radbot, the radio robot, as they approach the headquarters of the National Air and Space Administration, AKA NASA. By an almost improbably lucky coincidence, Brad Bramble's uncle, Eugene Bramble, works for the Aeronautical Agency, and our cosmological crew plans to hit him up for access to a rocket ship so they can rescue a kidnapped space prince who bears a striking resemblance to Marilyn Monroe. Pretty straightforward, right? <laughs> Let's listen as the astrological action unfolds. Take it away, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and genderless robots. Them too! <laughs> This bionic bot runs on binary code, junior astronauts, so stuff your ones and zeros and get used to it. <laughs> Non-binary code. <laughs> we're here, we're queer, we're blasting into the upper atmosphere. <laughs> but first, We've got to gain access to the launch pad. And the man with the key, Brad's uncle and uncle Eugene Bramble. Let's see how our heroes handle this. <laughs> this place is enormous. Which office is your uncle's, Brad? No, I'm pretty sure it's on this floor. Make haste, Earth detectives. We must get to the rocket ship and rescue Prince Lusick. Aren't you a navigational robot, Radbot? Why don't you help us out with a map? Uh, Radbot is programmed with Star Chart's only human designate, Lillian, not office buildings. Speed is our best option. We're going as fast as we can. Will you? Oh, no you don't. 
I know that scanning sound. You better not. Human designate Lillian could optimize her speed if she removed her footwear designated high heels. You know what? I hate this robot. I'm going to kick this thing to high orbit and we'll pick it up on the way by. That would require a force of over 60,000 newtons. Well, let's see if you got it in me. No one tells Lillian Steele to take off her high heels. Simmer down, you two. You want to get us kicked out? We're here! This is Uncle Eugene's office! Now play nice, everybody. We need to really grease the wheels if we're going to get access to a rocket ship, let alone to be allowed to take it for a little joyride. Oh, before we go in, there's something you should know about my uncle. What's that, Brad, darling? Well, you see, he's kind of, um... Out with it, kid. We're burning time here. Has he got a bad temper? Is he prone to violence? Wild moon swings? Antisocial tendencies? Poor hygiene. <gasps> no, he's... And we need to cast Eugene Bramble. Playing Eugene Bramble will be the only one not on stage yet. Adam Martinetti! Woo! <laughs> ah. No, he's not violent or unstable. He's... Brad? This is a surprise. My heart rate is elevated and I'm experiencing corneal, corneal de dilation. I should log this. Step inside. Boring! Like, <laughs> really boring! Who are these people? One man, one woman, and one small mechanical being who appears to be non-human. I should log this. Did you all obtain visitors' badges? Um, no, Uncle Eugene. We didn't. This is a serious breach of protocol. <gasps> Nephew, I'll have to fill out forms E647B and THX1138 immediately and cross-file them with security. We'll get you those badges, don't you worry. <coughs> In the meantime, I'll log this. Uncle Eugene, we have a favor to- One moment, nephew. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Man, woman, small, non-organic being, elevated heart rate. Advise obtaining deferred security badges utilizing Form C644 and THX1138. Oh, now wait a minute. I should have used Forms E1138 and THX1647. <laughs> Nephew, your visit has got me quite discombobulated. And I'm afraid I can't afford to lose my concentration today. Today, you see, we're launching a rocket into outer space. Perfect timing. We can only hope to approach perfection, unidentified woman. <laughs> no. Obtain names of visitors at earliest convenience so as to ex expedite future communications. But I'm afraid the margin of error is quite large. Exhaustive preparation and attention to detail can help close that gap, but the, but the potential for catastrophe is really quite large. I apologize for my outburst. <laughs> I should log this. <laughs> oh boy, this is trying. May I remind you of our pressing time concerns, man? Shut up, you bothersome thingamabot. Eugene, how long until launch? Can we hitch a ride? Barring any unforeseen complications, the shuttle is set to launch in 15 minutes and 54 seconds. Of course, now that time is less than I originally stated. <laughs> and now it is less again. <laughs> and now less again. <laughs> yes. I know how time works. It is the universe out to vex me today. How about it, Uncle Eugene? What would it take to get us on that rocket ship? Most astronauts train for years to achieve mission readiness, nephew. Four years, to be exact. Four years, nine months, 16 days, and five hours, to be exactly specific. <laughs> well, we've got less than 15 minutes. How ready do you think we'll be? I'm afraid it's out of the question, unidentified male. Note, move acquiring visitors' names up on the agenda. <laughs> Even without the training, you'll need a special identification badge to be allowed into the spacecraft, and those can only be issued to personnel with security clearance XJ25312LP or higher. Whee This bland human possesses such security clearance. You have to help us, Uncle Eugene. Impossible, nephew. To even deviate from the mission timetable, I would have to fill out a host of forms to report to my commanding officer, who would have to apply for a special mandate. Eugene? Yes? Is that the special security clearance badge around your neck? Yes, it is. 
Oof, my glasses. <laughs> Got it! Lily! You punched my uncle! <laughs> Sorry, boys. Time is of the essence. I like this human. Beep boop. Let's go. Sorry, Eugene. We'll send you some moon dust or something. I should... I, I, I should log this. <laughs> and so the gang races to the launch pad with time a-tickin'. <laughs> time to launch. 90 seconds, man. Quick! Nope. Grab those spacesuits. Mine's awful baggy. Mine keeps sticking to me, almost like a magnet. Mine isn't doing that. <laughs> me neither. Perhaps there is some uh, steel in your support garment that is interfering with the suit's magnetic clasp. D don't be absurd, Radbot. Time to launch. 70 seconds, man. Boop. Lillian, there's no time. All right, fine. <laughs> Everyone turn around! <laughs> I'm in the stupid suit. Can we go now? Time to launch. 50 seconds, man. Boop. Plug me into the navigational computer and junk. Okay. There we go. Rerouting navigational control to planet Plank. Strap yourselves in, Earth detectives. I'm in. Me too. Me three. Let's go. Time to launch. 20 seconds, man. Boop. 19 seconds. Boop. 18 seconds. Boop. 17 seconds. Boop. 16 seconds, boop, 15 seconds, boop, 14 seconds, boop. Where's the override? There is no override, man. 11 seconds, boop, 10 seconds, boop, 9 seconds, boop. <laughs> Terminables! Correction! It is a term of seven seconds. Boop. Victor, I will not be held responsible for what I do to this robot once we rescue the space prince. I really won't! Calm down, Bill. We're about to go into outer space. I'll rip your transistor out, you hear me? Three seconds. Two seconds. One second. And one day, a being named David Bowie will harness these rays and make the journey into our watery blue sphere for a term all too brief. Aww. And our heroes, sitting in their tin can, hurtle forward through space when, all of a sudden, a disturbing sound catches their attention. <coughs> that be? You inputted the course properly, didn't you, Radbot? Oh, you! High levels of sarcasm detected, man! <laughs> Now's not the time, Miss Steel! What's going on, Radbot? The cloud of cosmic dust is interfering with our antennae. Someone will have to venture out the airlock and correct the problem. Oh, no, I don't think so. That idea has so many red flags all over it, it's practically a, a communist banner factory. Radbot, isn't there anything you can do to correct our trajectory? Uh, I can only control the software, man, not the hardware. 
Uh, Earth Detective Brad, someone must venture out onto the outer hull. One, two, three, not it. Not it! What? I thought we were doing fingers on noses. <gasps> Come on! Sorry, Victor. Off to the airlift you go. Whatever happened to women's lib? I did my fair share of women's lib when I unloaded my support garment back on Earth. <laughs> all right, all right. I don't need to hear it. Glorious Steinem, Grace Kelly are doing all kinds of unexpected things in zero gravity. Not all of them unpleasant, but... <laughs> I said I didn't need to hear it. I'm going. I'm going. Um, what kind of unexpected thing? I'll tell you when you're older, Brad, dear. Uh, Bradbot to Earth Detect to Victor, man. Bradbot to Victor. Do you copy, dude? <laughs> <laughs> I copy. I'm exiting the airlock now. <clears throat> this is a weird sensation. It's like being covered in a thousand clean, wet washcloths all at once. <laughs> Attach your anchor cable right away, or we will be unable to retrieve you if you detach from the spacecraft, man. Roger that. Anchor cable attached. What's it like out there, Mr. Marshall? Oh, it's cold. And floaty. <laughs> I can't tell if I'm upside down or right side up. What can you see? I see... stars. Never seen so many stars in my whole life. I guess all the pollution in Crime City blots them out, but gosh, I wish you could see this. It's it's beautiful, Lillian. Can you make out the constellations? Maybe. I don't know that I'd recognize them, but there's the Earth. You can see all of America from up here. Hey, down there, all you Americans, it's me, Victor Marshall, private detective in space. <laughs> We will be irreparably off course and beep. Woo! Beep. Four minutes, 26 seconds. Calm down, Victor. Can you see the antenna? Oh, right. Sure. I can see it. It's a few feet away, but I can't quite reach it. You've got to hurry, Mr. Marshall. We've only got minutes to spare. I don't know how to move any faster, kid. Wait. Whoa. What is it? What do you see? I think it's that cloud of cosmic dust Radbot was talking about. Can you relay visuals, Earth Detective Marshall? It's pink, mostly. Some spots are yellow and... and... <gasps> what? It just shot lightning at me. Victor, it's a cloud. It can't shoot at you. I've been shot at before, Lillian, and this thing is definitely shooting at me. It did it again. But to shoot at someone, the shooter would have to be alive! Bradbot, scan that cloud, quick! Woo! Finding inconclusive, man. What was that? It hit the ship! It's. it's aiming for the anchor cable! Quick! Find something to grab onto! There's nothing! Victor, hold on! I can't! Cable severed. Earth Detective Victor is untethered, man. Can you track him? Can can we find out where he's going? Uh, Earth Detective Victor has been pulled into the cosmic cloud. Tracking is impossible. Boop. Oh no! He's gone, isn't he, Miss Steel? I believe so, Brad, darling. Oh, Victor, what will we do without you? Well, this is just great. How are we supposed to have a show when our hero gets himself sucked into a cosmic cloud? <laughs> just what kind of cockamamie hero is Victor Marshall anyhow? We should we never should have gone to outer space, junior detectives. Give me good old terra firma any old day of the week. But wait, what's this? More pages in the script? <laughs> there must be more action yet to come. This is a fortuitous day indeed. I know you wouldn't let us down, Vic. Never doubted you for a second. <laughs> Sit tight, junior detectives, and we'll discover what comes next after these messages.
Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to talk to you for a, or take a moment of your time to discuss women in the workplace. You see, women in the workplace is a reality that we can no longer ignore. <laughs> Let's take a look. When Mike was doing the show, he was a factory foreman, but Brad is a factory foreman, and he's going to have a talk with Dan, the factory owner. Let's see what they have to say about women in the workplace. Hello, Mr. Smith. May I speak with you a moment? Of course, Brad. Sit down, won't you? What's on your mind? The new bearings inspector. That's what. Ah, yes. Sharon. I've got a resume right here. What an impressive work history. All right, you've had your little joke. But what's the idea of sending me a woman? You know I asked for a man for this job. We don't have a man with her qualifications. Now, really, what's wrong with her? She's a woman, isn't she? Well, what's wrong with that? There's a number of women in your department already. They're accurate, quick to catch any mistakes. They have a lot of patience for the work. Well, sure, but that comes out of books. You don't know what it's like working with them. Tell me then, perhaps I've been misinformed. Just the other day, I asked Marvin to move from workstation nine to workstation 10, no fuss, no muss. When I asked Carol to move from workstation eight to workstation nine, she said she just moved to that workstation the day before and didn't want to keep moving every single day. You see, with a man, he simply does as he's told. With a woman, everything is a big production. I think I'm starting to see what the problem is, Brad. The trouble is, the trouble is that you're a real piece of shit. <laughs> What's that? Sure, you're rigid and inflexible and a terrible old sexist. Why on earth are you making your workers change workstations every day? That's ludicrous. Mr. Smith, what are you saying? Brad, take a look inwards, and you'll see that you were the problem all along, you goddamn misogynistic asshole. <laughs> but, but, but the women! Run along now, Brad. And if I hear any allegations that you've made this new bearings inspector's job difficult just because she's a woman, you'll be looking for a new line of work. Women in the workplace. Get used to it, you human pieces of garbage. Yeah! <laughs> Welcome back, Junior Detectives. When we last left our hero, Victor Marshall, had become untethered from the rocket ship and sucked into a cosmic cloud. But what's this plot twist? Moments before he was lost, Victor reported that the cloud appeared to be firing lightning bolts at him. But how could that be, unless the cloud was alive? <laughs> Let's listen and find out just what in the Jupiter one is going on. Ooh, my head. Where am I? The last thing I remember is that goofy cloud shooting a lightning bolt at me. Hey, hang on a minute. I recognize this. This is a dreamscape. Just like the last time I hit my head. Keen listeners will recall that the last time Victor experienced a blow to the head, he awoke in a strange dream reality and had a literal fist fight with the physical embodiment of crime, a sequence that turned out far darker than originally intended. <laughs> <laughs> the producers of Crime City promised that this dream sequence will not be as dark as that dream sequence. <laughs> All right. Whatever you are that brought me here, come on out. I promise I'll take it easy on you if you show yourself. That means we need a mysterious voice who gets a special piece of wardrobe. Oh. Oh. Adam Martinetti, please. Uh -huh. oh. Yeah. Oh. Ooh, mysterious. It turned out better than I hoped. <laughs> it's Sparky the dog. Hello, Earth Detective. Can you hear me? Oh, no, you don't. No creepy theatrics or weird sound design. Just get out here and show yourself. But I'm right here. Where? All around. I am the Cosmic Cloud. <laughs> this is the stupidest show. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I've suffered through enough weirdos and puns and villains with themes. I draw the line to talking cloud. I'm out. Is, is he allowed to do that? I need someone else to come up here and play the part of Victor Marshall. Any volunteers? How about you?
can't wait to see this play out dramatically without any further breaking of the fourth wall. <laughs> Good. In that case, I am the Cosmic Cloud. How can that be? Many things are possible in outer space. Wait, that's the explanation. Many things are possible? I changed my mind. I don't want to be in this show anymore. Hey, come on. No, no, it's, it's cool. Where's the original Victor? Uh, there is no escape. Oh, yeah, there he is. There he is. Here you go, pal. You're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I blacked out there for a second. You were saying you're the Cosmic Cloud? That's right. I'm the one who summoned you here from your home planet, Earth. No, you're not. We were summoned here by a distress call from a space prince, Prince Lusik Mokdok. Ah, uh, yes. Well, what do you get if you rearrange the letters in Lusik Mokdok? <laughs> That's right, right. You get Cosmic Cloud. You're telling me that we broke in the net, knocked out Brad's boring uncle, and stole a rocket ship, all because a cloud of space dust sent us an anagram? Yes. I'm a trickster thing. Oh boy. But why? What's the point? Do you have any idea how boring it gets out here in space? There's no one to talk to. We broke so many laws, including the law of gravity. We could have died. Several times. <laughs> you think that's bad? I don't even have word search puzzles out here. And cousin, if you're aching for a word search puzzle, you are old. You're kidding. No! Word searches are stupid and everyone knows it. You can't just put people in life-threatening situations because you're bored. I can't? Why not? I can shoot lightning. Yeah. <laughs> and you nearly killed me with it. I thought you'd be impressed. <laughs> Targets tend not to be impressed by bullets. Well, that's no fun. I didn't invite you in here for a tongue lashing, you know? You didn't invite us at all. You tricked us. Well, think how I feel. An all-powerful cosmic cloud bored to tears floating around out here. And the only way I can get people to come over for a visit is under false pretenses. pretenses. Well, this seems worth it now. Look at you. <laughs> After wear that dumb suit out here, you'll die. I'm warning you, Dusty. I don't respond well to threats. I wouldn't dream of threatening you, Earth Detective. Especially when I could animalize you at any time I felt like it. Strike two, Dusty. That's the last time I'll tell you. I tend to win these fights. <laughs> Do you hear yourself? I'm a cloud. You're threatening to fight a cloud of dust, idiot. <laughs> a cloud of dust that put me and my friends in danger for no reason other than your own selfish boredom. Why don't you take up a hobby or something? But don't you see? This is my hobby. Playing with lesser beings, seeing how they can be manipulated like your Earth clay. But what do you do with your clay when it dries out and ceases to amuse you? You dispose of it. All right, strike three. You asked for it, Dusty. Ho, ho, ho! I'm so scared. <laughs> what are you going to do, Earth Detective? Put me in a headlock? I'm a cloud unit. Ow, ow, ow! Hey, what are you doing? How did you put me into a headlock? I told you, Dusty. I tend to win these fights. Ow! <laughs> my neck! I didn't even know I had a neck. Let me go! Not till you agree to send my friends and I back home and apologize. An apology? Come on, man. Don't be such a wet blanket. Indian burn. Ow! How are you doing that? <laughs> wet Willie. Oh, now that's just disgusting. You earthlings are weird. Fine. I will return you to your planet and leave you in peace. And? Ed, Ed, I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. I'm sorry, OK? I won't have used my phenomenal cosmic powers anymore. I'll take up knitting. I'll volunteer at a library or something. You've bested me, Earth Detective, and for that I will return you to your home planet. In 20 Earth seconds. Boop. 19 Earth seconds. Boop. 18 Earth seconds. Boop. 17 Earth seconds. Boop. 16 Earth seconds. Boop. Can we skip to the end? Well, now I've lost my place. 20 Earth seconds. Boop. Send us back! Very well, goodbye, Victor Marshall, until we meet again!
But how? The last we saw you, you were sucked into that cloud of cosmic dust. Well, you know how it is, Lillian. Sometimes in this life, you just have to put a cloud in a headlock. <laughs> You're aware that that doesn't make any sense, right? Like, at all? Yeah, clouds don't have heads. <laughs> what happened? The cloud of dust sent us a phony message from Prince Luzik and lured us into space because it was bored. There never was a space prince? Nope. Just an ornery collection of cosmic particles. Congratulations, Earth detectives. There are not many who can best the cosmic cloud, man. But you have triumphed. As such, you are entitled to a reward. A reward? How neat! <laughs> yes. <laughs> I will now transform myself into a futuristic device which will allow you to carry thousands of songs and radio programs <laughs> right in your pocket. <clears throat> Beep. Thousands of songs? Wouldn't that mean the end of radio as we know it? Yes. I am the wave of the future. I can even make telephone calls. <laughs> If you take me to your Earth patent offices and mass manufacture my design, people will beg, borrow, and steal just to possess a device like me. <laughs> Sounds like people will really go crazy for this thing, huh? Yeah, and not the good kind of crazy. It sounds like this kind of device would give us a lot of power. Wouldn't it, Radbot? Yes. You would surely be Earth millionaires, man. I think we'd better take a lesson from the Cosmic Cloud Gang. Unlimited power is not what's cracked up to be. What are you saying, Earth detectives? We're saying that maybe someday, someone will develop a device like you, Radbot. But they'll come by it honestly. For now, you're too much of a good thing. Thanks, but no thanks. You Earth detectives are a mystery to me. What is to become of Radbot? Radbot, be honest. What does your database say about my support garments? I have data from several scans of your support garments saved in my internal memory, Earth Lillian. But what does that have to do with anything? Boys, do you mind? Not at all, Miss Steel. Have at a Lil. All right, Rudebot, let's do a little reprogramming. Oh, oh, that felt amazing! You heard it here first, Junior Detectives. If anyone out there in the future hears this program from the fabulous 1950s and develops a pocket-sized music player, they owe some serious royalties. Oh, and also our favorite trio of crime solvers have conquered outer space. But who knows what further adventures await our heroes in other strange and exotic locales. You know there's only one place to find the answer to that question and so much more. The next exciting episode of Crime City, brought to you by Cracker Jack Theater.